Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a system of equations with complex numbers. And I will be presenting three methods. And there's probably more than three that we can use. So we have z plus w equals 4 and z w equals 8 and we're going to solve for z and w. Let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I, I'd like to use substitution. Isolate w, you get 4 minus z. And then in this equation, replace w with 4 minus z. And then set it equal to 8 because zw equals 8. Now if you get a single variable, distribute 4z minus z squared equals 8. And I put everything on the same side. The right hand side is better because that's where z squared is positive. And now you get a quadratic equation. And you can solve this with so many methods. The only one which is probably you, would, you wouldn't use is factoring because this is not easily factorable. But quadratic formula and completing the square are perfect. Now, let's go ahead and use completing the square because quadratic formula is well known and it's pretty easy. Very straightforward. Let's go ahead and split the 8 into 4 plus 4 because now... This part is a perfect square, and that's just perfect. And let's go ahead and do this. Instead of putting the 4 on the other side and square rooting both sides, I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to write this as a perfect square and write the 4 as the opposite, kind of like minus minus 4. Minus 4 can be written as 2i squared. In other words, I can write this as 2i squared. Why? Because if you square 2i, you get negative 4. Make sense? Great. And this is nothing but difference of two squares, right? So we can write this as z minus 2 minus 2i times z minus 2 plus 2i. Great. Just change the sign here. Now, set it equal to 0, of course, and from here, you're going to get the z values easily. Easy. So z is going to be 2 plus 2i, or z is going to be 2 minus 2i. You can call them z1 and z2 if you want. That's totally up to you, but we still have to find the W values. But remember one thing that's super important here is that Z plus W is equal to 4. So W is going to be then 2 minus 2I. If you subtract this from 4, that's what you're going to get. If you subtract this one from 4, then you're going to get 2 plus 2I. I hope you noticed something. If you didn't, we'll talk about it. And if you did, we'll still talk about it. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Second method. So, and it's, this is when we're going to talk about it. So, here's what I'm going to do one more time. Our system is z plus w equals 4 and z w equals 8. Now, z and w must be conjugates. So, if z is equal to a plus bi, then w must be a minus bi. Why? Because the sum of z and w is real. And their product is also real. And this is only satisfied by two complex conjugates, which are in the form a plus bi and a minus bi. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made nine, I think, eight or nine videos on the basics of complex numbers, starting with the definition. Okay? So these are two conjugates or complex conjugates. They have to be. And even if you just set the following, like let's say, okay, I want to set W equal to C plus DI and then plug it in, you would find out that C equals A and D equals negative B, which would again indicate that these numbers are conjugates. Great. This makes our life easier. That's good. Now let's go ahead and add Z and W. The sum of Z and W, B, I is going to cancel out. We're going to get 2A. 2a is equal to 4. From here, we get a equals 2. Awesome. And their product is difference of two squares in the complex world. But remember, that is a sum of two squares in the real world. Because a squared plus b squared is real, that's equal to 8. Now, again, at this point, you have a couple different options. How do you find a and b? Well, if a is equal to 2, I can plug it in. That's going to give me b squared equals 4. And that gives us b equals 2 or b equals negative 2. But we have a equals 2 all the time. So this gives us, again, the same solutions. And z and w are interchangeable. Have you noticed that? Cool. 
because by finding z actually you're also finding the w values because they are completely interchangeable make sense awesome let's go ahead and talk about the third method because i think the third method is really good from an algebraic standpoint if you are doing algebra you should definitely know these identities and use them effectively especially if you are preparing for something like SAT or any other standardized test or any type of math competition. This will be very helpful. So here's what we're going to do. We have the system and we can solve this in so many ways, obviously, right? We could go ahead and, I mean, isolate Z from here, like write it as 8 over W, plug it in. It's going to be very similar to the first method. So I don't want to do that. I just want to instead take Z plus W and square it because that will give us something good. You'll see. If you square this, you're going to get z squared plus w squared plus 2zw. And of course, it's going to be 16 because z plus w is 4. And we know zw is 8. Interesting. 2 times 8 is 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. So we get z squared plus w squared equals 0. Now, in the real world, this would mean that z and w are both 0. Because otherwise, you cannot get 0 by adding two perfect squares. Because one of them has to be negative, and that's not possible in the real world. But in the complex world, everything is possible, right? We can have two complex numbers squared, and their sum is 0 without them being 0. But to get closer to the answer, let's just go ahead and square z plus w as well. Now, do we know z plus w? I mean, sorry z minus w as well. Do we know z minus w? We don't, but we can still square it, right? And when we do, we get z squared plus w squared minus 2zw. Here's the thing. We don't know z minus w squared, but we know everything else. What is z squared plus w squared? From here, we do know that it's 0, and zw is 8, remember? So it's going to be 0 minus 16, which is negative 16. Hmm. That's interesting. Can something squared be negative 16 or negative? Yes. In the complex world, like I said earlier, everything is possible. So this gives us two things. First of all, we know that z plus w is equal to 4, but z minus w squared equals negative 16 by taking the square root gives us two things. z minus w can be 4i or negative 4i. In other words, we're taking the square roots of negative 16 in the complex world, and there are two of them, 4i and negative 4i. Now, this gives us two systems. Wow. We get a lot of information, right, by squaring both sides. This is good. z plus w is always 4, remember that, and z minus w is 4i, or if you want to go with the other branch, you can use negative 4i. So this basically gives us two systems of equations, and guess what? We can solve each system easy. Add them up, divide by 2, you're going to get z. Subtract and divide by 2, you're going to get w. So, this again will give us the same answers. z is going to be 2 plus 2i, and w will be 2 minus 2i, or vice versa. And the difference is actually here more clear, even though they're interchangeable. In the z minus w case, they're not, because it's not uh, commutative. That's why we have the opposite here and here. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.